The easiest way for you to start building from simple to complex automation is by using the UiPath Macro Recorder. This tool allows you to record mouse events and keyboard activities to generate automation scripts. The activities are arranged based on the sequence of actions being performed in the screen. The sequence are saved in your workflow which you can use later to play back the recorded actions. Let's get started. I have a simple application pulled up as an example. The macro recorder is flexible and can be used in various applications like browsers, Windows applications, WPS, and even virtual desktops and Citrix applications. In the design tab, let's click on the record button. This will pull up the recorder wizard. We have a couple of options here. Record existing allows you to record an already open application. You can use Record Web to record actions on your web browser, like Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. Record App allows you to specify an application to pull up and record actions to it. The rest of the items on the right are pieces of actions you can use to perform manual recordings. Since we already have our app opened, we can use Record Existing. As I move my mouse over to this application, it automatically detects each element in the application meaning an activity can be performed on the element being highlighted. This makes it much more reliable for UiPath to perform the automation. It doesn't rely on screen coordinates or the position of the elements, so it doesn't matter where the location of the app is. UiPath will still be able to find and run the required actions on the elements. The macro recorder can perform some basic actions like single mouse click, selecting a checkbox, selecting a radio button, selecting an item from a drop-down, typing a text or inserting a keyboard key. There are some few limitations in the automatic recorder. Other advanced mouse events like hovering to an element or double-clicking needs a manual recording in order to achieve these actions. Let's click on the email address field. This will pull up this pop-up dialog where you can type in a custom text. You can also insert a keyboard command through this dialog box. Let's type in a sample email address. Down at the bottom, we have an option to empty the field before entering the text. Let's check the box. The Type Password checkbox allows you to hide the characters you are typing. This is useful if you are typing a sensitive information like password. Please press Enter. Now, let's click the Create Expense Report button. You can pause the recording at any time by pressing the Escape key on your keyboard. Let's press Escape. This will pull up the wizard. You can either stop and save the recording by clicking the Save and Close button or continue with the recording by clicking the Record Existing again. For now, what I want to do is to get a text value of the total expense. Let's click on Control, then select Get Value. This activity will get a text value of an element we have selected. The recorder will automatically give you an option to select an item on the screen through the orange box. Let's click on this number. A new activity, Get Value, has been added to a recording. Okay, let's now save our recording. So here we go. The recorded actions have been compiled and saved in this recording sequence. Let's open it. Our automation starts by attaching the Expense IT application. That means it activated the application so further actions can be recorded in it. Next, we have a Type in To activity, which enters the email address in the email field, followed by a click activity on the Create Expense button. Each recorded action generates an equivalent activity in a sequence and it's completely editable by changing its properties, variables, and current values. Another attached activity has been added to recognize the new window. Here's the get value activity that scraped the text value from the application. You can always add or modify any activity in this sequence. Let's test our automation by adding a right line activity. This activity, just like most programming tools, allows you to view the output of your automation in the output panel. Then we can just copy the output variable of the get value activity. Let's paste it here. To test the automation, let's go to the Execute tab and click Start Debug. OK, 
gives us the correct result as you can see in the output panel. The macro recording also works with other type of applications like .NET and Java applications, as well as Citrix and web applications. Let's take a look at another automation I created for Salesforce. The automation is performed in a web browser using the record web method. I created a separate video in creating the automation for Salesforce. Please check the link posted below this video. One of so many reasons why UiPath is a powerful automation tool is that pieces of automation can be integrated with other applications. Thus, it produces a seamless, reliable, and much faster results than any other macro tools combined. Here in my sample Salesforce automation workflow, I added a read CSV activity. The automation retrieves this data from a CSV file and uploads it automatically in the web. Let's run it. There you have it, UiPath's macro recorder brings a new level of recording automation. UiPath lets you record most actions possible on presentation layers like clicking on buttons and links, typing into editable controls, selecting a drop-down menu, but also advanced actions like waiting until an image appears on the screen or even extracting structured data from a web page. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.